in the last few lectures we basically discuss about what is combustion and then and combustion plays a very important role in the development whatever we see today starting from the beginning of the human civilization and fire is the key which uh, really helps us to have all the developments in science technology and materialistic life and so also the spiritual life of human being and we had looked at extensively about the scope of the combustion and which uh, encompasses a large number of applications not only in the engineering but also in other domestic applications industrial applications and other applications so in the process we learned that the fundamentals of combustion is very important for uh, developing the new systems and also the reducing the emission which is the modern challenge due to the blatant misuse and abuses of the um, technologies in modern life. For developing the fundamentals of combustion we need to look at the various uh, other subjects like thermodynamics, fluid mechanics chemical kinetics, heat and mass transfer and what we are going to do is basically today we will be discussing about the thermodynamics which will be relevant for the combustion uh, uh, you know work. So, let me uh, start this lecture with a quote from Arnold Sommerfeld uh, who says the thermodynamics is a funny subject. The first time you go through it you do not understand it at all. The second time you go through it, you think you understand it except for one or two small points. The third time you go through it, you know you do not understand it, but by that time you are so used to it, it does not bother you anymore, right. Is it not true? I mean all of you have studied uh, earlier thermodynamics at least starting with the plus 2 then thermodynamic subject is a full place, then several application in you know other uh, whenever you are dis, uh, talking about other subjects and now we will be reviewing the whatever the aspects of thermodynamic required for dealing with the combustion problems right. So, therefore, thermodynamics plays a very important uh, role and what we will be discussing I will be trying to start from the very basic, then we will be looking at thermodynamic properties, laws of thermodynamics and we will be looking at thermo uh, stoichiometric, then thermochemistry and uh, of course, the we will be learning how to calculate the adiabatic flame temperature and in the end I will deal with chemical equilibrium right and uh, these are the things which we are going to discuss. Uh, in few lectures. So, question arises what do you mean by thermodynamics? Can anybody tell me? Because you have studied enough you know in thermodynamics. So, can anybody tell me what do you mean by thermodynamics? Study of heat. Huh? Study, of heat. Study of heat. So, is it only heat? It is not about work right. So, um, it is about basically um, energy right and a question might be arising what is energy right. So, uh, if you look at thermodynamic war is consist of two latin words one is thermis other is dynamic. Thermis means basically it is the heat and dynamics is the force. So, therefore, if you look at and heat energy is or you sometimes we call it as a thermal energy is basically will be converted to various forms like electrical, mechanical, magnetic and other forms various forms. Therefore, the thermodynamic will be dealing with subject about energy and its conversion from one form to another. So, therefore, you can say thermodynamic is the physical science 
that deals with the energy and its conversion from one form to another. As I had asked a question, what do you mean by energy? It is a very commonly used word, right? We use every day, but when we define it is little awkward, you know, because we know. <laughs> so, therefore, to say something uh, is very difficult, but however, you, uh, if you recall the definition what we are exposed to, that is, it is energy is basically a capacity to do the work, right, or it is uh, ability to cause an effect, is not it? You call that energy, right? According to me, energy is an enticing entity that governs all the activities of the entire universe. Without energy, can you think of anything? Right? For example, you are sitting and listening to my lecture attentively or without attention, you know, <laughs> whatever it may be. Right? But still you are doing. A suppose a pain is there, will it listen to my lecture and understand or or won't understand or try to understand? No, no. Because it is not having what you call energy. Is it so? It is having energy, but it is not having consciousness, right? Okay. And of course, um, in our scriptures, people have defined this energy and then com consciousness, all those things, you know, related, and which we call it as a Brahman. So, if you want to really learn about it, then you will have to read the Bhagavad Gita, which is very important scriptures to learn a lot of things about our tradition. Now, whenever we talk about this energy and its interactions, you know, we do. Therefore, we need to understand what is happening. When you do that, how to analyze? Basically, we will be using a system. What do you mean by system? Is a domain, physical domain, or a, it can be virtual, it can be, you know, uh, physical domain, right? Whichever is maybe, it may be fixed boundary, it may be uh, variable boundary, right? So, in which you will be you know, um, uh, basically focusing your attention and then trying to find out how is interacting. So, whenever there is a system, so if you look at this is a system here, right, and uh, this is basically system here, right, and then rest of the thing is your surrounding, and the system plus surrounding is basically universe, right. For example, if there is a let us say this is a candle flame, right. Let us say this is the candle and this is your flame. Okay. Now, if you look at, if I want to see how much heat is coming out of this flame, right, what will happen? Like the surrounding will be outside, right. This will be my boundary system, right. So, therefore, I will be, uh, you know, looking at how much heat is transferred, how much mass is transferred or not, you know, all those things I will be looking at it to uh, having some interest to know what is happening. But if I look at, if I take outside of my uh, room that as a system, what will happen? No changes will occur. That means, it is very important to identify proper boundary of a system. Are you getting? So, therefore, and whenever you are saying that you will have to depend on what you want, accordingly you will choose your boundary. There is no fixed you know rule that okay look i will do this way for all the problem no you will have to uh, look at what you want and accordingly you will have defined your si system and it is boundary and outside the system it will be basically surrounding right and system and surrounding together we call it as basically universe right now as i told that uh, the system whenever the system is interacting with surrounding there will be you know some change will be occurring. What are, what are those changes? That means, there will be heat interaction, there will be work interaction, there will be also mass interaction. right? Now, depending on that, we can divide the system into three categories. What are those? One is closed system, other is your open system, other is your isolated system. That all of you know. right? 
And when I say this closed system, what do you mean by that? Basically, there won't be any mass exchange between the system and surrounding. But however, there will be energy interaction which will be taking place. Like, for example, if this is your system and there is no mass interaction between system and its surrounding. But however, there will be heat exchange which is taking place between the system and its surrounding. Uh, if you recall in the last two last lectures, you know, we had discussed about two calorie meter. Okay. Are you getting? Now, which one will come under this closed system if I want to analyze? Huh? Bump calorie meter. Why? Because in that case, what happened? There is a bump here, you know, where there is a fuel, right? And there is a system here, right? And this is oxygen, right? Oxygen is reacting with that. We are having ignition, you know, this is your igniter. And surrounding, of course, uh, we are having water. Right. That means this is my this is my system, right? This is your bum, right? This is your bum which is not bum which is nothing but your system and this water is your surrounding, right? And this we can call it as a basically closed system, right? Is that clear? Because there will be no mass, the like fuel and oxidizer when you react with that, it will be converted into product. If it is hydrocarbon fuel, naturally product will be carbon dioxide and water, right. And this product will be remaining there after the combustion takes place. But however, the heat temperature, if you look at, if I put a thermometer here, right thermometer right what will happen to this uh, temperature temperature will go up of the water right so naturally what is happening this system is basically is a closed system okay now if you look at open system what is happening both the energy and the mass transfer will be taking place between system and its surrounding right for example there is a burner right and you are supplying the fuel and air like in case of your lpg burner there will be some combustion taking place and product will be formed that means the mass is coming in mass is going out basically products and there will be also heat interaction so, if you take the example of the calorie meter, the Junker calorie meter, you remember the Junker calorie meter, right? Junker calorie meter, you remember that if I draw here, or maybe I will draw here, there is a flame, right? And keep in mind that this is the fuel, this is your flame, right? And of course, there is a water what we are transferring, right. This is the fuel, right, and this is your flame. And what is happening? This is your what you call there will be also a chamber that in through which water you are passing through. These are basically water, you know, which is going out. This is water is going out. So, therefore, if I take this as a system, you know, right, okay. if you take this as a your what you call system, right, boundary, then what is happening? Then your fuel is going out, right. And then of course, uh, the mass will be going out of these gases, gases will be going out here products and this is my system boundary, right and this is your water is your surrounding right of course uh, water is also flowing but we are not bothered about it right 
So, there will be exchange of heat or energy transfer will be there and mass also being transferred in this system. So, therefore, that is an open system right. And in case of close isolated system neither the mass nor the energy which will be transferred or in taking place between the system and surrounding. In other words, there would not be any exchange of mass and the energy between system and surrounding. Question arises when we will use it? We mostly use open and closed system, right. Do we use isolated system? Any idea? Huh? Where? Thermos. Thermos. Th Thermoflax, you are talking about. Ah. Ah, but what we will do? We do not use that as a system. If I want to find out what is energy transfer or what are the, this thing, then I will take it as a open or a closed system and then manage. Okay. But isolated system, where do we use? We do not use, na, right? But we do use. Huh? Huh? No, even cryogenic also you will not be using. Basically, when you want to calculate the entropy, Gibbs free energy and other things, we use that using that principle. Are you getting? Except that in our day to day life, we do not use it, okay? except those places where you know we need to calculate the entropy and then find it out because entropy of the you know system is increasing, then we will take care of the both the system and surrounding, then we will see, then calculate back and then find it out you know that way we do. Okay. So, therefore, whenever we looking at the system basically what do we do? See suppose the system is interacting with the surrounding, what will happen? Right? For a properties, for example, this is your what you call a candle right or okay, let me say this is your candle and this is your flame. Okay. And then the, if there is a heating is going uh, you know to the surrounding, what is happening? The properties will change. What properties? Temperature, Temperature right? What else? Pressure, volume. pressure, if it is a closed one, pressure will increase, otherwise it will not because atmosphere is there, therefore it will be not really changing the pressure because it is a very big, you know, it is like a even though the gas is expanded due to the temperature in the flame, but it would not affect the atmospheric air that much. So, pressure will be remaining constant, right. So, therefore, you know like uh, what happened to other properties, densities, some other things, right. So, it will be changing. That means, when we are talking about this interaction, basically we will be looking at properties, then only we will estimate you know various interaction what is happening, how much energy being transferred, how much mass being transferred all those things we will do, otherwise we cannot do. Without properties can I do talk about anything? No, we cannot. In the similar manner what we do if you look at if you want to connect to your life you know for example, like you people are youth right, is not it. Now, whether you are a youth or myself a youth is a one question comes, then how will I identify? I will have to look at properties, okay. otherwise you and me are same, <laughs> is not it. So, but if I ask this question, what are the properties of a youth? Age, age is not, because your age and my age is different, hair, right. Hair, huh? hair, color. Huh? hair color, how does it mean, I can make <laughs> color? See now, nowadays colors are available, right? Even the young people are having now brown color hairs, right? Uh, some people blondy, you know, like we are following Americans. Some people are putting blonde color, you know, or maybe strip one color is different. So you can do that. That is not a big thing. So properties you need to understand. It's very important. But unfortunately, we do not know. Neither the students nor the youth they know what are the properties, how they will develop, whether they are having those properties or not and also 
the people who are dealing with the youth, they do not also know. <laughs> are you getting? Anyway, so if you want to know that, you can read my book, Wings Up Youth. Um, I have identified 16 properties. There might be more than properties by which a youth can be identified. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, property is very important to identify and then find out what is happening, interactions. Otherwise, it is very difficult. So, when you talk about these properties, thermodynamic properties, what are those? Pressure, temperature, right? volume, density, entropy, enthalpy, right? internal energy, these are the properties. If these are the properties, then naturally we will have to can divide into two categories then only. One is intensive properties, right? like pressure, temperature, specific entropy, these are intensive properties and extensive properties mass, volume, enthalpy and entropy. So, what is the difference between this intensive and extensive? We need to know. Huh? Intensive yes, intensive is independent of mass, volume right? and others. So, whereas, ex uh, whereas extensive will be dependent on the mass and the volume right for example like uh, if you look at this uh, milkman who supplies milk you know he is very much aware that if you will add one you know liter of milk with another half liter of water then it will be milky water but however he will tell you that look this is milk okay and sell and you will get some money out of it again. So, is he aware about this extensive property, but he knows what it is, he may not be knowing this is extensive property. Okay. So, therefore, that is the extensive property is your what you call um, volume right uh, or the enthalpy, entropy right mass these are the things and which is dependent on mass and also it will depend on the volume right and intensive property is independent of mass and generally extensive property for unit mass or unit mole uh, sometimes we call intensive property but however i would like to say it is specific property like specific entropy right and your um, specific volume right you know specific volume volume divided by mass or volume divided by mole right so when we deal with this uh, we will be also trying to relate these properties right for example pressure i need to relate to the temperature pressure i need to relate to the volume and this is uh, you know is uh, being used particularly the gas and other also and this is known as the equation of state right and we use uh, the gas very much in your com in our combustion because the gaseous combustion is very easy and also easy to handle easy to control and the most of the combustion will be taking place in gaseous form except very uh, certain uh, things which will be in the condensed phase. Condensed means in the liquid phase or the solid phase, right? Some combustion do take place, but those are very limited. But even if it is taking place in the uh, solid state, solid phase or the liquid phase, but still the majority of this combustion will be in the gaseous phase. So therefore, we'll be dealing with uh, mostly the gaseous. Towards the end, maybe I'll be talking about little bit. Uh, solid fuel combustions okay and also the liquid fuel combustion we'll be looking at in the droplet combustions whenever we're looking at but mostly we'll be dealing with the gaseous fuel combustion so when you do that the equation of state uh, you know that is uh, very much what you call you are aware that is basically governed by the ideal gas law now that means the gas should be ideal right of course this formula you know pv is equal to basically n r u t p is the pressure v is the volume n is the number of moles r u is the universal gas constant and um, of course 
A n is the Avogadro's number and K b is your Boltzmann constant and these values uh, given here which you people are very much aware that Avogadro number is 6.023 into 10 power 26 per kilo mole. K b the Boltzmann constant is equal to 1.38 into 10 power to minus 23 joule per Kelvin per molecule. And question arises when this gas will be you know uh, valid, when this gas ideal gas law you can apply. Any idea? At very low pressure and high temperature. Low pressure I can apply, right? And high temperature I can apply the ideal gas follow. will follow. But what is the basic for that? What is the fundamental for it? Fundamental so just the ideal gas to drive kya gaya tha. So two basic elements liye gaye dekhi internal nuclear forces ka aur dusra volume jo gas is apply karte hain. Ab hum low agar pressure karte hain to volume to vaise bhi gas ko kam ho jayega. Aur temperature jo hum high karte hain to internal nuclear kinetic energy. Okay. So uh, basically, what will happen? The volume occupied by the molecules in a container is very very small as compared to the volume of the container or containers volume right and the intermolecular forces between the mo molecules will be very very low right then only we will can use this kind of ideal gas. But question arises, how do I know whether I can apply it or not? That means, how actual gas is deviating from the ideal gas, because under these conditions uh, we can call it as an ideal gas, right. Uh, for example, like if I take this room here, this is one atmospheric pressure, right. The temperature will be maybe you know let us say 25 degrees Celsius because AC is here. So, uh, therefore, 298 Kelvin right and whether can I apply say that it is an ideal gas, how I will know right. For that I need to look at compressibility chart which we will be uh, discussing in the next lecture. And question arises whether we can use the ideal gas law for the combustion or not, right. That question we need to ask, right. And uh, if you look at let us say this room if I take or something like that and atmospheric pressure and this thing I want to find out what will be the density right. So, by this we can basically look at if I take the uh, I am sorry like if you take this room contains nitrogen gas at 300 Kelvin and one atmospheric pressure right. I can find out what will be the density, density will be basically P into molecular weight right divided by R u T and we will substitute these values right pressure is 101325 Pascal into 28, 28 is the molecular weight nitrogen and uh, the gas constant is 8314 into 300 Kelvin if I take right it will be 1.14 kg per meter cube. So, by this we can find out the density right and uh, of course, um, we can also find out other properties if I know like uh, pressure and we can use this ideal gas law uh, for combustion or not that we need to ask. And actually you can apply basically or we can use the ideal gas law for the combustion problem because the temperature is very high and even the pressure is moderate right is even high right. Because if pressure is high can I apply this ideal gas law? I cannot right. So, what you are telling is basically low pressure is not low pressure you can apply, but ideal uh, uh, because uh, high pressure you cannot really apply because the molecules will be coming closer the density will be very high right 
and the intermolecular forces will be high. So, as a result you cannot, but in combustion temperature being very high, we can apply very easily the ideal gas law, uh, density being very low right. As a result the molecule number uh, volume occupied by the molecules will be very less as compared to the total volume of the containers or the system whatever you are considering. So, with this we will stop over, we will uh, uh, take up this about uh, compressibility uh, factors or the chart in the next class. Thank you very much.